As we reported, the top U.S. military commander for the Middle East was on Capitol Hill today. In addition to the fight against ISIS, he was asked about recent comments by President Trump suggesting American troops in Iraq could shift their mission. And as Nick Schifrin reports, those comments about U.S. troops watching Iran have sparked deep concern in Iraq. Near the Iraqi-Syrian border, an Iraqi soldier and his American advisor line up artillery to strike ISIS. Outside Baghdad, U.S. Special Operations Forces train Iraq's elite counterterrorism service. And Iraqi soldiers learn to fire American rifles from anti-ISIS coalition troops. These scenes of partnership, filmed by the U.S. military over the past year, show what Iraq has invited the U.S. to do. 5,200 U.S. troops train Iraqi security forces and target ISIS fighters who lost territory but resumed insurgent tactics. I was but this weekend, President Trump told CBS's Margaret Brennan the mission should expand. And one of the reasons I want to keep it is because I want to be looking a little bit at Iran, because Iran is a real problem. Whoa, and that's news. You're keeping troops in Iraq because you want to be able to strike in Iran? No, because I want to be able to watch Iran. All I want to do is be able to watch. But even watching Iran exceeds the tasks Iraq has approved. Today, Iraqi Prime Minister Adel Abdul Mahdi, who has been working with the United States, criticized President Trump. I don't think that such statements are useful. In fact, they won't help much, and I hope that he would back down from them. In a statement, First Deputy Speaker Hassan al kabi repeated a vow that Parliament would pass a law terminating the security agreement with America, in addition to ending the presence of American military trainers and advisors and foreigners on Iraqi soil. And on a Lebanon-based TV network on Sunday, Iranian-backed militia spokesman Jafar al-Husseini hinted militias had the capacity to evict the U.S. All of our options are open in front of us. We have the ability and resources to execute them. What the president's remarks have done is to make it more difficult for even America's closest allies and the Iraqi political class to continue to advocate for the American presence in Iraq. Faisal Istrabadi is a former Iraqi diplomat and directs Indiana University's Center for the Study of the Middle East. The Iraqi parliament was already debating a bill that would evict the U.S. That momentum will increase and put pressure on Prime Minister Adel Abdul Mahdi, who leads a government considered technically capable but has no natural constituency. He was turned to by the political parties in parliament and asked to form a government. He's in that sense a relatively weak prime minister. And you don't want the prime minister in a political battle with parliament because in the Iraqi system, the prime minister will always lose. Today, the top commander in the Middle East, General Joseph Votel, tried to reassure that the U.S. respected Iraqi wishes. And our military mission on the ground remains very focused on, on the reason that the government of Iraq asked us to come there. And, and he suggested the president's comments had not become a military order. Virginia Iraq. Democrat ISIS Senator Tim Kaine. And as far as you know, there is not a change in the definition of the mission, at least as far as the Pentagon is concerned. I have no additional tasks that have been given to me with regard to that. If the U.S. were to change its definition of the mission in Iraq to be a mission about watching Iran, wouldn't it be pretty important to have Iraq agree that that would be the focus of the mission if we were to be uh, having troops in their country to carry out such a mission? Senator, we are in Iraq at the invitation of the government, so yes, I agree. I think that this statement is not enough. Abbas Kadim leads the Atlantic Council's Iraq Initiative and recently met with President Saleh. Kadim says thanks to President Trump's statement, Iran's powerful allies can now use the Iraqi constitution to argue against a U.S. presence because it requires Iraq to adhere to the principle of non-interference in the internal affairs of other states. Iran has more friends inside Iraqi parliament and also inside the uh, government and inside even the public. Uh, and these friends uh, are willing to indulge Iran. Before uh, Sunday, they did not have the votes. Uh, now I am told by 
some parliament members that they have the votes at least to have it uh, passed through the first reading. That is a major shift. In Iraqi leaders admit they knew all along U.S. troops in Iraq were likely conducting extra missions, even watching Iran. But until Sunday, that was never made public. That veil of, of plausible deniability or willful ignorance, whatever you want to call it, that's been lifted. The president of the United States has blatantly announced what his agenda actually is. And that means for the U.S. and Iraqi officials whose agenda is to improve Iraq, their mission became much harder. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Nick Schifrin.